Joseph Campbell brought mythology to the masses through his best-selling books like The Power of Myth and The Hero with a Thousand Faces, which are not only blockbusters but also scholarly classics. I recently had the opportunity to sit down with Bob Walter, Executive Director of the Joseph Campbell Foundation, to talk about the newest release in the collected works of Joseph Campbell. It's called Goddesses, and it contains never-before-published material from Campbell on the subject of the feminine divine. I hope that you'll enjoy the interview. You're not only the Executive Director of the Joseph Campbell Foundation, but you're also the Executive Editor of his collected works. Tell us about the work that you do. Well, let's talk about the collected works. Um, we are here at New World Library that publishes the print editions of the collected works. There's also audio and video, which we won't talk about. <laughs> but we'll talk about the origin of, of, of the print editions, um, because it's an interesting story. Um, it was around 1980 uh, when Joe Campbell and I and a man named Alfred Vandermark uh, decided that we had to start a publishing company in order to um, publish uh, Joseph Campbell's Historical Atlas of World Mythology that we'd been working on, because no one would do that. When uh, Joe suggested that we start this publishing company, uh, Fred Vandermark, who came from a publishing background, said, you can't have a publishing company with just one book. And Joe said, oh, well, there's all sorts of books that deserve to be published. Uh, Bob and I will make a list. <laughs> and we went back and sure enough, we made a list of the books that he thought should be published. Um, not only books based on the, his own work, um, a lot of which had been interrupted for some time while he worked on the Atlas, but also works by Maria Gimbutas and other scholars whose work he'd been drawing upon um, for the Atlas and for his lectures. And so um, the idea of pulling all this stuff into a collected works um, was there. Uh, uh, but, I mean, he, he hadn't published a book in years and no one was publishing him, so it was um, somewhat uh, uh, presumptuous. Uh, that, that, that that's what we would do. Uh, after his posthumous success, however, um, when everybody was very interested in anything that his name was associated with, I went back to that list and um, said, you know, um, there, there's really things here that, that, that should have been published and deserve to be published. And, uh, and that became the basis then for uh, the collected works um, into which we then rolled uh, earlier work of his as it came available. Mm -hmm. uh, From other publishers. Correct. As it went OP, um, we didn't renew licenses or in some cases we were able to take back the copyright as we did with The Hero for the Thousand Faces, which is now the, you know, the spearhead of the collected works published here by New World Library. Right. But we're up to an array of titles which um, are all behind me. You can't see them all, <laughs> but there they are. And, uh, and the goddesses is 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 is, is the newest. Um, and yet, it's um, it's it's one of the oldest. Uh, and, and 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 there's another story there. Would you like to hear it? I would love to hear how the book came sure. to be. And I know that there was no book published by him until this one that had to do with the subject of the goddesses. So tell us how how it came to be. Well, you know. At the time we made this list, there was an entry on it that said, you know, something on the feminine divine Maria's work and so on. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's because in the Atlas, uh, we went back to the earliest mythographic imagery mm -hmm. uh, that could be found. And much of the earliest was um, goddess figurines um, or fragments that that through his association with Maria Gimbutas, he saw to be goddess figurines. And so we'd done a lot of work on that, which got condensed down into a very brief portion um, in, the, in the historical atlas. But he'd also begun to um, do lectures on it. And he did several weekend long lectures. Um, and and he, he, he was deeply involved in the material. Um, 
which was at the time highly controversial. He said, "There's, you know, there's we could we could really expand this," um, and so right after uh, right after he died with the when we when we first signed the collected works with HarperCollins, um, it was one of the first books um, that that, that I, I I thought should be done, and so. Um, uh, we were in the, in the process of cataloging his posthuma, and we located everything we could find that had to do with um, the goddess, the writing, the research, um, the stuff set aside from the atlas, um, the um, the, um, the audio tapes that we'd identified of these slide lectures, and we um, and I, and I handed it over to um, a young. Um, a young woman who, who had um, persuaded Jean Rudman Campbell that that she and Joe had discussed doing such a book, and uh, had she been a student of his, and that seemed reasonable. And uh, what we got back was not um, was not publishable, and and uh, so I I uh, I rejected it, and. Uh, also, and, and there was an impulse at that time to do it because everyone was saying, oh, Joe never talked about, about goddess, about feminine, the feminine divine. And, and yet, this was such a huge preoccupation of his, but it was only seen in these very discreet venues. Um, so, I thought, I also then, then started to realize that if what we put out wasn't really exceedingly well done, um, we were really opened up for, for criticism, and Maria's work was 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 still um, in, in the crosshairs. Right. And and so I set it aside, and uh, then I tried again around 19, I might say 97, 98. Um, I thought that we had enough of the collected works grounded. It made sense to revisit it. I thought I found the proper person. The first person had had it was just really um, episodic. It didn't hold together, um, and uh, and then the second person had a much more coherent narrative, but only about fifty percent of the words were Campbell's, and she invited all of her all of her her scholarly friends to. To do sidebars and insertions, and and it was uh, it was this pastiche. It, it had a great narrative sweep, but you know it left a lot of Campbell on the floor. Right. Um, and and so then, you know, then then when we started working, I started working with Saffron through Opus. Um, not only was she familiar with Joe's material and her own background being in goddess or feminine divine scholarship, um, but she also knew Maria's work, mm. and so. I had, you know, twice burned stay out of the kitchen, so <laughs> I was not even thinking. I, I had this way down on my list, and then I thought, you know, th 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 let her have a, a crack at it. Um, and, and and really, I, I told her about the earlier um, attempts. She, there were there were they were there for her to see, but I suggested she not look at them. But instead, go back to all the source material, and we had, by this time, cataloged even more, um, and so uh, sh she did that. And 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 you know, the only really instruction I said to her is is trust the narrative. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the Joe uh, did do slide lectures. There was a, a sweep to the narrative. Uh, it was woven together with pictures and imagery. Uh, because by that time in his work, he was relying as much on image as on story. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I think she did, and, and we had already addressed certain ways of handling interjections and editorial comments when we reissued The Hero with a Thousand Faces. So there was a bit of a template to work with. But it was the third time's the charm. You know, <laughs> not the third time you get burned. You know? <laughs> well, it sounds like the book has gone through its own hero's journey of sorts, right? It has. It, you know, is that when I look back and I think back and I think, Phew, you know, <laughs> we talked in 1980 wow. uh, about there should be this book. Yeah. Um, and then to try, you know, in 
in you know in in eighty nine, and then he, and, you know, then again in ninety nine, and then finally, you know, yeah, finally here it is. The time is right. The time is right. Okay. And so, what comes next for the Joseph Campbell Foundation? And well, we you know we've got the reformatted, reissued hero uh, hero's journey coming out. Yes. So it'll be in the it'll be in the standard format and brought into style with the rest of the of the series. Um, I've signed a contract uh, for a book. Um, on Joe's work on the Arthurian material, um, which will include not only his master's thesis, The Dolorous Stroke, but also all the other work he did in Arthurian material, um, as well as a, a pretty good uh, scholarly uh, a catalog of, of, of everything, all, all of the holdings in the archive and libraries around that material. Mm. So it'll, it will be hopefully for his work in the Arthurian stuff uh, and and behind that we've got selected letters, which is a another project that's been you know years in the years in the making. Mm. Um, so so yeah, and and then a, there's still a couple of surprises. There's still a couple of things on that list, including the last thing Joe was working on when he passed on, and that that will remain um, untitled, for the, <laughs> untitled <laughs> for the moment. Untitled for the moment.